Well, hey everyone, it's been a while since I've done a vlog, hasn't it? Let's fix that. This was directed by Tony Cervone and stars the voice talents of Frank Welker and a bunch of other people who aren't voice actors. In this movie, Scooby-Doo and the gang team up with hapless superhero Blue Falcon and his sidekick Dino Mutt to stop Dirk Dastardly from opening the gates of hell and unleashing Cerberus upon the world. No, for real. If you had told me ahead of time that that was going to be the plot of a Scooby-Doo movie, I would have thought you were out of your damn mind. But, no, that's... that's the movie. It doesn't start out that way. It actually starts out with all of the characters as children. We see how Scooby meets Shaggy, and then how they meet the rest of Mystery Inc. And that part of the movie, I really liked. I thought it was very sweet, very charming. It was a lot of fun. They solve a mystery of a haunted house in their neighborhood, which of course isn't really haunted. It's just some creepy old dude. And I would have gotten away with it too if it, well, you know the drill. Then we flash forward to the gang as adults, where Mystery Inc. has gone into business with Simon Cowell, Yes, that Simon Cowell. And from that point, it just goes completely off the rails. Basically, it becomes less a Scooby-Doo movie and more of a Hanna-Barbera shared universe movie. We have Blue Falcon, Dinomutt, Captain Caveman, voiced by Tracy Morgan of all people, and references to other characters like Underdog. And it just really didn't resemble a Scooby-Doo story at all. It's not that the story was bad, necessarily. I thought it was fine. It's easy enough to follow, it's entertaining, it's perfectly kid-friendly, it's got plenty of sweetness, even when it came to the villain, oddly enough. Part of Dirk's story is that he is trying to find his long-lost dog, Muttley, who disappeared in an accident many years ago. And it's amazing how torn I was over Dirk Dastardly, because he was a total asshat, and I wanted to see his plans fail and get his comeuppance, but at the same time, I really wanted him to find his dog. Most of the jokes landed, a few didn't. There was one joke about toxic masculinity that just felt a little forced, but otherwise, they did a pretty good job of the comedy. You know that scene in the trailer where the cop is asking Shaggy for Scooby-Doo's full name? After that, he says, well, if a dog has a middle name, it can't be held liable for damages. I don't like it, but that's the law. <laughs> okay, that was funny. Of course, based on what we've seen in the world recently, a cop showing the utmost respect for the law is probably the least realistic thing about this movie. And this is a movie that features an ancient demon being unleashed upon the world. And a few of the jokes were definitely more for adults who grew up watching Scooby-Doo and less for the kids. Like, there's one character who says Shaggy sounded like a middle-aged man's idea of how a hippie talks, which, yeah, accurate. The animation was pretty good overall, although it did seem to me that the quality went down a little bit during the big sequence at the end that takes place in Athens. I don't know if anyone else noticed that, maybe it's just how it looked on my TV, but to me it seemed like there was a little bit of a drop in quality. And if that's because they ran into some production issues with the COVID-19 outbreak, that's totally understandable. And I suppose I should spend a moment to talk about the controversy regarding the cast, which I kind of snarkily referred to at the beginning of this vlog. As you may know, the current crop of Scooby-Doo voice actors, with the exception of Frank Welker, who still does the voice of Scooby, was cast aside in favor of big names that they could put on the marquee. And I think that was a stupid move, because it's a kid's movie. Yeah, there's some stuff in here for the adults as well, but the kids are the target audience, and they aren't gonna give a damn who the voice actors are. You really think the kids are gonna say, Oh, Mommy, Daddy, can we watch that new Scooby-Doo movie? It's got Will Forte and Mark Wahlberg in it! No! Of course not! And like I said, most of the main cast, except Welker of course, are not voice actors, and it shows. They weren't terrible, but they weren't all that great either. With one exception, and that is Jason Isaacs, who did the voice of Dirk Dastardly. He was excellent. I have no complaints about him. But the rest of the cast, I could take him or leave him. So overall, I would say it's a good movie, but not a very good Scooby-Doo movie. Because like I said, it's more a Hanna-Barbera shared universe movie. Are your kids going to care that it's not a good Scooby-Doo movie? Probably not. Is it worth paying $20 to watch at home? Also, probably not, but when it comes down to a more reasonable rental price, go for it. And that's all I have to say about Scoob, so until next time, take care.